you know, bottom line, if you have set, if you've already had a heart attack, if you've already declared yourself, okay, or if you have familial hypercholesterolemia like I do, then you absolutely need a statin. And then the data on statin use and longevity is very, very strong and very robust. So for secondary prevention, totally, absolutely sign up. You need it. And if you're if it's primary prevention and you don't have FH, um, I think this is uh, you know real travesty. And if you have type, let's say you have type two diabetes, no personal history of heart attacks, and no no family history that's uh, abnormal. It's average family history with respect to cardiovascular disease. What would what would your general position be on if statins are a good idea for a diabetic? No. So if you have type two diabetes, the first thing to do is get rid of the type two diabetes. Everyone assumes that type 2 diabetes is this chronic, unrelenting, progressive, destructive, degenerative process that will never get better. And you know, you're going to be on medicine, whether it's insulin or oral hypoglycemics, you know, for the rest of your life. That's the general gestalt amongst the uh, cognoscente in, uh, in medicine. Garbage. Absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Numerous studies now show that a ketogenic diet can actually reverse type 2 diabetes. Verda Health, 77% of people who go on a ketogenic diet reverse, not ameliorate, reverse their type 2 diabetes. Just by getting rid of the offending agent. And what is the offending agent? Well, what is type 2 diabetes? It is extreme carbohydrate intolerance. So if you're intolerant to something, what's the best way to deal with it? Get it out of your diet. That's how you deal with an intolerance. If you are lactose intolerant, get the lactose out of your diet. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have, you know, if you have peanut allergy, get the peanuts out of your diet. Whatever it is that you have an intolerance to, you know, get it out of your diet. So, but yeah, but so get uh, carbohydrate out of your diet, you are on a ketogenic diet. And it turns out a ketogenic diet will reverse, reverse type two diabetes. Now, There are other ways to do it too. It's not like you have to be on a ketogenic diet, but that is one way. And what it does is it is the, you know, the, 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 the test case. It is the, it is the, you know, theory of the, of the argument. Okay. That if you fix the diet, you can fix your type two diabetes. So, you know, I have family members who are type two diabetic. Um, They're on statins. Um, they're not, they're not given clear dietary guidelines by their physician, except to cut out basically junk food, which, which by that they mean like candy and things like that. But they're told, for example, eat as much fruit as you want. Does that make sense to you? Fruit's complicated, but let me, let me try to explain fruit. Okay. So yes, get rid of candy, but there's a whole bunch of other things you have to get rid of too, in order to you know, make that right. I guess the, you know, the question is, okay, get rid of candy. Sure. Sure. Is Cheetos food? Is Cheetos food? Yes or no? Probably not. Calories. It's got calories. Is Cheetos food? So what is the definition of food? That's, that's what we need to know. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, so, Go to the dictionary. I've got one up here if you want. I'll read it to you. Okay. I've learned, I've memorized it. <laughs> the definition of food is substrate that contributes to either the growth or burning of an organism. That is food. Growth or burning. So the question is, does ultra processed food contribute to growth? My colleague, Dr. Efrat Monsenigo Ornan at Hebrew University, Jerusalem, has now looked at this and has shown actually that ultra-processed food inhibits growth. It inhibits skeletal bone growth. It inhibits trabecular bone growth. It inhibits long bone growth. It actually reduces uh, calcium uh, uh, in, in cortical bone. Okay. It changes epiphyseal function. Okay. 
So it is inhibiting growth. And we also know it hijacks growth for cancer, you know, because it basically um, fructose in particular does not need to be burned in the mitochondria, right? I see. So it sounds like you're saying there's an inhibition of natural or good growth and there's actually, uh, it's actually stimulating pathological forms of growth. Correct. Correct. How about burning? So mitochondria burn, right? Fructose, which is in all virtually all ultra processed food. I mean, you know, it's been added to 73% of the items in the American grocery store on purpose. Okay. Inhibits three separate enzymes necessary for mitochondria to do their job. It inhibits AMP kinase, which is the uh, enzyme that drives mitochondrial biogenesis. So you get make more mitochondria and fresher mitochondria. It inhibits ACADL, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase long chain, which is necessary to cleave the two carbon fragments to engage in beta oxidation in the mitochondria so that you can burn in the first place. And finally, it inhibits CPT1A, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1A, which is the enzyme which regenerates carnitine. And carnitine is the shuttle mechanism by which the fatty acids get from outside the mitochondria to inside the mitochondria. So basically, you can't even import the fatty acids to burn. So ultra-processed food does not contribute to growth and does not contribute to burning. So is ultra-processed food food? Is Cheetos food? What do you well, think? I knew what I was asking when I asked it. Yeah. Bottom line is we think it's food because it has calories. Can you name something else that has calories that's not food? Alcohol. Alco yeah, alcohol. Alcohol is not food. There's no dietitian on the planet who will say that alcohol is food, but alcohol's got calories. It's got seven calories per gram. How about trans fats? 